Okay, today we have a Dell XPS. This is an M1530 that's given us the black screen. You get lights for a second, nothing on the screen. This is a typical GPU failure. We're going to go ahead and get our uh, lead tech tray to do the reflow and walk you through it. Okay, right now we're just going to go ahead and pull it apart. He's going to take out the battery and pull out all the, uh, the screws and plastics. We get a lot of this type of work at Reboot. We go through anywhere from uh, 200 to 500 laptops per month um, that get shipped in from all over the country. And it's very, very common to see uh, video problems with even the, uh, the Dell style laptops. Mostly HP that comes in here, and you've probably seen our DV9000 video. Um, we've upgraded a lot of our equipment. You guys will get to see a, a shot of that real soon here. And if this is your first time pulling the laptop apart, you're definitely going to want to get a piece of paper and a pen and write down where everything went from. Or um, you could always videotape it and go back to it later to see where everything went. And we get calls all day trying to figure out what goes where, and it's a lot harder when it's apart trying to figure out where it all goes back together. So if you keep good notes, you won't have any problems. Lots of screws. Or if you've done thousands of them, you just kind of memory it. You can see he's done this before, so he's used to all where the screws go on the pieces. What he just shanked out right now is the uh, wireless. That's the wireless card. And this is actually a re-repair on this laptop. What's very typical on the XPS series is next to the GPU, which the GPU is where he's pointing to, the actual um, rivet that um, you screw down into breaks off of the board. So you definitely want to epoxy that back in place. I recommend JB Weld, or you can make up a little bracket to hold it back in place. We get a lot of stuff in from all over the country that other shops have worked on and we get to clean other people's messes up. It always makes it exciting. Hmm. The tape that you see on there is just to keep the um, chip from shorting out when the copper's on top. That's good standard practice. You got to be really careful in the front there with the uh, ribbon cables. They're very easy to tear. And then in the next couple weeks, we're going to have a lot more how-to videos from uh, Reboot here. Um, all of these are going to be in HD, and we look forward to actually having a, a Google TV channel pretty soon. We're excited about that. We'll be streaming, I want to say, every Wednesday out of here at a, a set hour, but I'll update you guys when that comes about. Okay, just pulled up the LCD ribbon, the power, and all this stuff has to come apart to get at that motherboard that we're going to reflow.
if you run a shop or you repair your own stuff and you have a lot of um, laptops you work on, remember always to initial or put a name of the customer on the actual unit that you're repairing. That way you don't switch a hard drive on somebody. That's standard practice here. And Dell does a really nice job of shielding everything. HP, the whole uh, motherboard has uh, places where the stickers, but it's Dell actually shields the whole top piece, which is a great practice. That, if you have something spill through the keyboard, it doesn't spill all over the, the motherboard. It has some shorts. But a typical repair like this for us, depending on how bad it is, is anywhere from an hour and a half to sometimes three hours. We've got to really rework a chip. Then we stress test it for a couple hours to make sure um, it performs good. We stress out the GPU to make sure that it it's still stable. And we have a very good success rate on these. Got the board out. Memory comes out, the CPU is going to come out. He's going to remove all the stickers. That way when he heats up the whole board, it doesn't uh, pull components off. You're going to want to keep that sticker, that way you can put it back in place. And If there's rips in it, which is usual, we keep some black tape around to patch everything. Alright, here we go. We're cleaning the board with MEK. You can actually buy this at Home Depot. It's just a regular solvent, uh, similar to acetone and a toothbrush. Just kind of scrub everything up. We do this before and after on the boards to make sure there's no corrosion or substances underneath the chips and make sure they're all nice and clean. He's actually hooking up the motherboard to the reflow station. This is a dark IR reflow station, which means it's actually um, dark IR that's going to come down from the head and it's going to reflow that um, the solder on the board. It actually doesn't affect the CPU as much as a brute force type of heat where if you use a torch, um, hot air, or one of those uh, halogen style reflowers. This is a, a lot more um, easy on the board and the results are a lot better. Plus you get a long-term fix. It's a, the best way to do it. Again, this is a, a dark IR station. You have heat coming up from the bottom, getting it to the flow point, as well as heat from the top that's directed. And what we do is we put on a, a template to bounce back the heat on any area that we don't want to uh, reflow. Right now he's using an alcohol-based Kester flux. you might not see from this angle, it actually has a uh, thermal sensor that lets the machine know when it's exactly at the flow point and shuts it off accordingly. Alright, as you can see the temperature is down to 28 Celsius and 30 Celsius on the top, so it's nice and cool. This particular uh, uh, ACHI reflow station has the, um, the cooling built into it, which is nice, so it does that real fast. Trey's going to pull it off the unit. We're going to go ahead and test it out. Should be like new. All 
All right. We're looking at the rivet right over there. Trey actually just re-soldered that back into the board. That's what actually came off the board and caused that uh, rivet to, um, at, not rivet, but the heat sink actually to move to the side a little bit, which helped it overheat. So soldering this down with some good solder is going to help it stay down. Um, we're also going to put copper on that to drop the temperature. That way it don't overheat in the future. All right, right now he's going to pretty much put all the basics back together just so we could test it to make sure that the reflow was successful. Um, now that we got that rivet in place and we reflowed the GPU, we'll put a little bit of thermal compound on that and the uh, copper with the heat sink and I think we should be in pretty good shape. But we'll go ahead and test it out and show you guys live how that works. We have pretty good success with this. Nine times out of ten the reflow does it. Sometimes we do actually have to pull the chip off the board if we have a pull of solder and um, take all the solder balls off and actually re-ball it. Now he's putting a thermal paste on. More is not necessarily better. Yeah, just a nice thin coat. Better safe than sorry. And while we're talking about copper, do not use pennies. I don't care how many videos you've watched that you see people putting pennies in them. It does not work. And Get not yourself really some copper. Yeah, and it's like Trey just said, it's not 100% copper. What we use here is 100% copper. It's a little bit over a mil. Um, good stuff. It's just it's the way to go. When you actually test with a, a penny versus this copper you'll see a good 5 to 10 degree difference. It really does make all the difference. Looks good. That's the name of the game. Have it snug down nice and tight good contact to the uh, GPU and CPU, good thermal grease, the better thermal grease, even better. Something arctic sil silver, or, um, just anything a, a little bit above that white stuff. Usually you're fine. That and a good copper and you're in good shape. Video. If you guys can make that out. Woohoo! So she's fixed. Now we gotta put her all back together. But if you guys run into the same issue and you think this is above uh, what you can handle, we do a flat rate fix for this. It's 125, that includes the uh, shipping back to you. Um, send it on in to Reboot IT. Go to our website, rebootit.biz, for more information. And again, this was a Dell XPS. This particular model was an M. Is this a 13? 15, 1530. All back together. And party lights. <laughs> Dell, happy, happy. All right. That's a Dell XPS reflow.